I did. Um, there was the climate, um, climate change report for Ireland published recently by the EPA. And I wrote, I was one of the authors on the sea level rise chapter. Wow, <laughs> that's bloody lucky. Brilliant. So maybe. Yeah. That's grand. Yeah, OK, so. Wait, like... And then I did a flood study for the Dundalk in my previous existence I worked. But anyway, I'll tell you more what I know about Dundalk Brilliant. and how bad it actually is. All right, shall we lash into it then? Will we, Rosemary? We will. Okay, brilliant. So can you tell us, are you familiar with Dundalk Bay? Yes, I am. I've worked in flood relief for the last 20 years. And prior to starting in MedAaron, I worked for the OPW and I carried out a study in Dundalk Bay. So I know all about the embankments in the town and the lovely long lying beaches that consist of Dundalk Bay. Um, and Giles's Key and that kind of area as well. So yes, I have a good idea about Dundalk Bay you'd and how the fr- sea interacts in that area. Yes. So you'd also be familiar with the Lord Limerick Embankment. Yes, it's a key part of keeping the water out in Dundalk. Can you tell us what kinds of flooding events have met Aaron been recording in Ireland, especially on the East Coast, say in the last, you know, the last decade or two? In the last... Um, Met Aaron have um, only really started looking into flooding in the last four or five years. But since 2000, there's been a number of east um, flooding storm events that have affected the east side of the coast really badly, including um, the worst kind of event was in 2009 but in terms of coastal. But in 2012 and 2013, there was an awful lot of supermoons, which I will explain um, the tidal flooding and coastal flooding is caused by a number of key elements. These, um, one thing you have to look out for is the moon. So if it's windy and there's a full moon, the chances are you might get a flood. And every 30 years, there's this um, super moon. NASA have done research and timing and stuff into that. And the last time this occurred in Ireland was in 2012, 2013. And this year, we'd say we've had two supermoons, but in one period in 2012, 2013, we had six supermoons over a, um, it was about two month period. So high, high tides. So if you get that kind of, that's high, just astronomical tides caused by the, uh, the gravitational pull of the moon. It doesn't matter what the weather is, but if you have them, you can get flooding. Um, in Dundalk, it's particularly low lying. And if the embankment wasn't there, the whole town would have been flooded. But luckily, it is there. And if you get any dangerous kind of weather and easterly winds into Dundalk, you can also end up um, in trouble. And I've probably answered about four questions in one go there. Yeah. But anyhow. Thank you, Rosemary. Really comprehensive. And so like I know you're I know you're not an engineer, but you are very familiar with the area. And I mean, are you concerned about the, the gaping holes in the embankment and that they might be eroding away with each high tide? I am an engineer. Um Amazing. <laughs> I really should have done more research before I rang you, Rosemary. <laughs> You're just like the absolute I, perfect woman. <laughs> Tell us again, um, you're an engineer. And I would have, who worked in flood relief schemes. And I understand that the OPW, there is three national big schemes under the, um, they have a catchment management plans done for the whole entire country. And in terms of coastal, there's three massive schemes. And one of them is Dundalk because of the risk of coastal flooding in Dundalk. Dundalk, Tralee and Shannon are the kind of the three biggest coastal flood risk areas outside of the major cities in Ireland, just to let you know. There's a possibility of, I think it's something like five or 600 houses flooding in a bad coastal event in Dundalk. And that'd be quite catastrophic to the town of Dundalk. And it's just, if the winds hit a certain way and a storm comes in from a certain direction, that's what causes coastal flooding. Luckily for Dundalk, most of our winds are westerly. So it's the west coast that gets the flooding. But the odd time we do get a strange easterly type scenario, such as um, the beast from the east. But in turn, if that coincides with a supermoon or a spring, a spring moon, like a full moon, and we get a storm event coming from the east, Dundalk would be in big trouble. 
can we can we delve a little bit more then since you are an engineer can we go a little bit more into what your opinion would be what you'd like to see done with the Lord Limerick Embankment because that's also a big part of my documentary about where it's actually going there are local lobby groups who'd like to see it turned into a walkway and things like that as well so in your opinion then as an engineer what would you like to see done with it Rosemary? Well you can go um with the way the environment is changing and embankments were quite effective if they're not maintained they collapse and they fall into disrepair so you've got kind of two choices building a second embankment in parallel is a very simple engineering solution but it mightn't be the best thing for the environment and there's these different systems you can do you can do very fancy things like in cork they've been looking to put in a tidal barrage but in cost terms the damages aren't there even in Cork the flood so often so that's where you put this kind of mechanical gate into the bay to stop um, the flooding and the water levels rising. In the case of Dundalk there's all this new climate change adaptability things you can do in the marine environment so you could actually build a kind of a, a structure out into the bay a bit further rather than disturb what's there and that could calm the waters down and reduce the flood levels and cause the flooding to move out further to the sea. In a number of cases, um, as far as I'm aware, the OPW have looked at doing joint um, public amenities with embankments. So they have actually put footpaths um, and cycleways along um, embankments. An example of this would be the Dodder in Dublin, the River Dodder in around um, the south side of the city. And they have embankments in this that are, are actually cycleways and pathways as well. So there be, should be no reason that the public and the dog shouldn't be looking for things like that from the OPW. I used to work for the OPW, so I really shouldn't be <laughs> in flood relief. So there is like an element where the local authorities can put flood relief schemes in with public run projects and put it all together, do you know? Mm -hmm. so you can get a public community out of it in some cases they've done in years ago I worked on a flood study in um, Drumcondra and if you've ever gone up to an Arl Island match being from Meath we used to go the odd time which is not a good thing when you're talking to people from now but um, we'd say nothing about that Rosemary um, there's Fagan's pub in the middle of Drumcondra and there's a park and what we did was we put embankments into the park that are used so the park is actually where the water goes. We didn't build a new um, area. We just put embankments back in, put a new pathway there. And when the flood occurs, it stops the embankment. Uh, the park is used as a mean teacher in the rest of the year, but for the flooding, it stops it off. And the same was done in Dunboyne and County Meath. They have a playground in a park and they have the flood embankments there. So rather than just building a big pond that had a tiny bit of water and now and then, it just, when it gets to a critical level, it floods out. Okay, the park's out of an action for a week or two. But the rest of the time, when you haven't got flooding, you've got a nice public community. And the maintenance, maintenance of the park ties into the maintenance of the flood release scheme. So you're killing two birds at one stone. And it's a really good investment from a local authority and the state if they do something like that. Amazing. In my opinion. And if you get the public involved positively, it can be an amazing partnership but it depends on the local authorities and it also depends on the vested interests and in trying to balance the whole lot but if you look at the OPW's policy and how what they're meant to be doing with flood relief schemes and in terms of climate change adaptability it's meant to be about um each scheme is meant to have a carbon um a carbon count on how much carbon's been used so a replacement rather than a refurb would up your carbon count because part of the climate change adaptability, and this is the policy signed up by these organizations, is that for infrastructure projects, the carbon, they have for every option, they have to look at all the carbon they're consuming. So if you have something there that's repaired, you're far less because you don't have to haul material in, you don't have to do a lot of things. It's far more environmentally friendly, possibly. Um, and I think you've actually pretty much covered everything plus an awful lot more that I didn't think I'd be able to ask of you. So um, I don't know. Any any final words? <laughs> you've given us plenty. Just make sure that you get a scheme that you want from what happens and that it's, it's friendly to your community. 
you know, and there has been done before and there's plenty of examples and maybe use the examples to go and talk to the council about this is what's done here, this is what's done there. So why isn't it being done for us? And Dundalk deserves to be protected from the sea. Thank you, Rosemary. And they're going to... I, I agree. <laughs> it's one of the, it is, I think, like after the major cities, it is like top of the list of vulnerable places in Ireland. So you need to protect it. You're an absolute star. And thank you for your work in our area thus far, Rosemary. <laughs> Well, we'll try our best and it's going to be interesting, you know.